Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Susan Lynn and I'm a psychic medium. Thank you for joining me today. I know I have a lot of new subscribers and I just want to thank you guys. Um, you know, I think this channel can be a little bit of Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde sometimes because I do some political videos, but I also do a lot of spiritual videos. And one of the things that I particularly really like, and to be honest with you, my spirit guides really want me to do more of is teaching. Um, and I have uh, been so lucky to have taught a class on the clairs, the clairs as we call them, that would be your psychic senses, your psychic senses of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and feeling. Okay. And I've been, we just finished a great class, me and Medium Kim, who you can find on YouTube. She has a fantastic channel. All one word, Medium Kim, Kim Copeland. Um, we, we just had a blast in that class and um, it was amazing. I, I saw people have really big breakthroughs and I know some of them are going to be watching this video. Do me a favor and comment below if you had a breakthrough or you found the class helpful. Um, we are going to do that class again probably in the fall, but right now we're going to be doing a mediumship class and our mediumship class starts on July 14th and I will leave that information down below as well. But I wanted to talk to you today about the Claire's um, because a lot of you are experiencing psychic breakthroughs and you don't really know that they're psychic breakthroughs. You might not even know that they're psychic. That's what happened to me. I'm pretty sure it's happened to you too. And let me explain how and why this is happening. Well, how it's happening is um, many of us, and I mean probably the majority of us, and certainly the majority of you watching this video, have had some of these things happen to you. Let me give you an example. So you've smelled cigarette smoke when there was nobody smoking in your house. Well, how do you smell cigarette smoke when there's no one there, right? Um, we think our mind is playing tricks on us. That's what we often say, right? So sometimes we smell um, sawdust, right? Um, or we smell um, a perfume, right? This, this can happen. You can have a smell and no one's there. How does it happen? Why does it happen? Well, it happens because you have a loved one on the other side who is sending you that energy, sending you that that memory so that you can know that they're nearby. Okay, so what's another way? And by the way, smelling is um, is clear alliance. Clear alliance. Okay, we we have five senses, and we also use those five senses in our psychic abilities. We just don't know that they're psychic. Here's another one. Have you ever heard your name called? Have you ever heard your name called? And and you know. Listen, you might not have heard it with your ear, but you heard it and you're like, I just heard somebody call my name. Weird, right? Weird. Some of us have actually heard it with our ears and gone looking for the person. I'm very clear audience. Um, it's, it's, it's very disturbing to me, so I ask them not to do it very often because I literally go looking for someone in my house when I'm alone. Um, as I've said before, I have a neighbor that uh, if my door is unlocked, uh, she will open the door and yell, I'm coming in. No kidding. So I thought I was in a bedroom and I thought I heard her say my name. And I come flying into the living room and there is no one here and the door is locked. So I know there's no one here. So that is Claire audience. When you hear things, either really hear them with your ear externally or you hear them internally. You hear someone call your name. Another one would be uh, clairsentient, clair uh, feeling, right? Um, claircognizance, clair knowing. These two can get a little bit um, mixed up sometimes in our head, but I'll give an example. How many of you have known the phone was going to ring? How many of you have known that the doorbell was going to ring? How many of you have known that your boss was going to walk in your office? You just knew it. You had a feeling. How many times do we say to our significant others, our friends, I just had a feeling that was going to happen. 
this is really accepted in our everyday world. It's very accepted for all of us to say, I just knew that was going to happen. I don't know how, but I just knew. But we never stop to think, that's psychic. How did you know? How did you know your boss was going to walk in? You don't have an explanation for that because it's psychic. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you that a lot of you are experiencing psychic abilities or psychic events and you've never really put, you never really stopped to think. This is really interesting. Why did this happen? We just accept it and move on, right? We don't, we know there's not a reason, so we just accept it and move on. But there is a reason. The reason is, is that you have psychic abilities. And there's a reason that in your family, you're the one that knows when someone's going to call. None of your brothers or sisters know, but you know. Well, why is that? Why are you different than them? Because you have psychic abilities. Now, this is important. The reason why I'm doing this video, for a couple of reasons, to be honest, but one reason is the veil between the worlds is thinning. You probably heard me say that before. It's not a, it's not a bad thing at all. And there is a veil. Uh, we call it a veil. It's always been called a veil. You could think of it as fog, or you could think of it as a glass panel, window. Uh, you could think of it as uh, whatever you want, right? But the veil separates us on this side from our spirit guides, our angels, and also our crossed over loved ones on the other side. Now that veil is thinning. Now I, I'm not going to go into why it's thinning uh, because I don't know that if we if we really know the reason exactly, but there's many um, there's many things that are contributing to it. But it is thinning. And what does that mean is that you're going to have more experiences. And you're probably having more experiences now, right? You're probably having an uptick in experiences. As we go into 2022 next year, everybody's going to have an uptick in experiences. Even if you're not quite so psychic, you're going to have more experiences. But if you are psychic... And remember, you may not be calling yourself psychic, but if you know when the phone's going to ring or you've heard your name called or you know that uh, you shouldn't take this route to work because there's going to be a problem or you know, whatever those knowings, right? Clear cognizance, you're psychic, okay? You don't have to do anything with this. No one's making you do anything with it. As the veil thins, it just means you're going to have more experiences with it. And this video is meant to help you understand those experiences and really to use them. I use my clair, uh, my clair cognizance, my clair knowing when I'm driving. And I've mentioned this before. When I'm behind a car and the car is going slower than the speed limit and I'm just a little bit impatient or I need to get somewhere, I will... Think about that car and think about that driver and think, is that driver going to turn up here at the red light? Yes, they are. Okay, great. And you know what? Nine out of ten times they turn when I think they're going to turn. So that's a fun practice that you can do. When you're driving, you can say, is this car going to change lanes in the next few minutes? Yes or no? Yes or no questions are really easy, really quick way to get started. Ask your guides. Ask for help. Yes or no? And, and don't be, the question shouldn't be really big. I mean, is the car going to turn is a very specific thing. Am I going to get a raise? That's a very specific thing. Yes or no. Now, when you start asking those questions and you get no, you might get a little upset. I understand your pain. They tell me no all the time. Um, and, and look, you asked, you got the information. Now you have to process it, right? You have to understand it. Like for instance, that car is not going to turn at the red light. That car is going to stay with you for the next 30 miles. Oh man, for real? I mean, really? Yes, the car is going to stay with you for the next 30 miles. You might as well put it on cruise control 15 miles less than the speed limit and just chill out because that's what's going to happen. So you can deal with this information. You have knowledge that other people don't have now you can deal with it now this is part of the process of maturing as a psychic right if you're getting this information and it's not information you like then you're going to have to learn how to deal with that information in a way that's helpful to you it, it can be helpful if you get the information you get the knowing you get the clear cognizance that Mm, I just have a feeling I think my boss is going to quit or get transferred. And I think 
I don't think I'm going to like the new boss. I just have a feeling. I'm sure you guys have said this to your coworkers. I'm sure I feel like somebody has said something along those lines. I know my, my coworker is going to quit and I'm going to have to take over their duties. How do you know that? I, I just have a feeling. I don't know. I just have a feeling. It already makes you anxious. You know, you're, bruf, you're brushing off the person you're talking to because they want to know how you know, but you're anxious about the outcome because you already know. So what do I say? Forewarned is forearmed. Forewarned is forearmed. Um, by knowing this in advance, now you can actually plan. Okay, so let's say that my coworker is going to leave under whatever circumstances. Um, and let's say that my boss is going to come to me and ask me to cover for them for a short period of time. Okay, let's say that's the knowing that I have. Okay, I have a knowing. I just know that scoundrel's going to ask me to cover for that person. You know what I mean? And you're mad, right? Well, you can't really be proactive when you're mad. So what do we do? We have this knowledge. Okay, I have this knowledge. Okay, I'm going to get I'm going to get mad and I'm going to let myself calm down. Then I'm going to get smart. Then I'm going to use this to my advantage. I'm going to know in advance that if my boss comes to me and asks me to cover for my coworker who's now gone, that I'm going to have a plan just in case it happens. Now, when you get these knowings, it's not 100% because we all have free will. Your boss may decide to let go of somebody else or this person may decide not to quit. We all have free will. But I will say that mm, I think that these knowings are right about 80% of the time, sometimes 90% of the time. That's enough of a percentage, in my opinion, to have a plan in case it does happen. So what's your plan, right? If, if my boss comes in and asks me to cover for this person, wow, what do I want? Instead of being caught off guard, because when we're caught off guard, we just agree to things, right? Because we don't have a plan. <laughs> we, we didn't see it coming. We didn't, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, I can do that. You know, your boss is asking you, right? So you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Okay, sure. And then later you're like, God, what did I do, right? Okay, this is a good thing. Clear cognizance. Boom, you had the knowing. Now you can come up with a plan. Your boss comes into your office and says, by the way, Sally left and uh, can you pick up the slack there uh, for a little bit until we hire somebody? Shouldn't be long. Well, you know what you can say? You know what? I would be happy to help you out in this situation. Absolutely. I'm a team player and I'll be happy to help you out. But I just want you to know that what Sally does is quite a bit of work and I'm going to be doing two jobs and I'm already really in over my head. So I'm going to need, what are you going to need? You're going to need Rod to take this other part of your work, right? Are you going to need somebody else to take some of your work so you can take Sally's work, right? Now we're negotiating. Now we're, now we're getting what we need. Now I'm not just going to take Sally's work and, and do two jobs. I'm going to take Sally's work and I'm going to take 25% of my work and I'm going to give it to Ralph or Rod or Jane or somebody. That's not your problem. That's your boss's problem. It's, it's up to your boss to go ask Jane if she could take 25% of your work. Right? So you, you forewarned is forearmed. You came up with a plan. Okay, so let's just say, you say, okay, yes, I can do Sally's work for um, six weeks. And then after six weeks, I really want to meet with you and renegotiate this because I can't do it. I'm just here to tell you my productivity is going to falter. I'm not going to be able to do my job well. I'm not going to be able to do her job well. You know, I think we really need to come up with a better plan than me just covering Sally. Do you see how knowing in advance you now have shifted everything and maybe saved yourself a lot of stress and heartache and anger and, and potentially bad a bad job performance right because now you're doing two people's jobs and or let's say you're one of those people that just will work an extra three hours a day well now the company is like well i don't know but susan's doing her job and sally's job i think we just let that alone like it is because we're only paying susan for susan but she's doing two people's jobs that's a trap 
That's a trap, you people that are super productive and super overworkers. That is a trap you set for yourself. So having these knowings can help you in your daily life. Okay? Now, I mean, you know, sometimes you, you might know things you don't want to know, right? Like maybe you know that, um, well, I mean, you know, Sally's quitting. You don't want to know that, right? You, that's something like, I don't want to know. 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 Right? Well, you know what? Life is always full of curveballs. And if you ask me, I would like to be a little bit more prepared for them if I can. So that's why I think working on your skills is important. And, and how do you work on them? Um, I'll get to that in a minute. They want me to go to something else. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. Um, how do you work on your skills? Well, there's lots of things you can do. For instance, I gave you the idea of riding in the car, right? Um, there's lots of really fun exercises that Medium Kim and I came up with for our class that help you um, really give you real world fun exercises to use so that you can strengthen your skills. Um, one of them uh, we didn't do in the class, but I just think this is... Um, this is fascinating to me. This is the most fascinating skill that Kim taught me. Um, I just think this is absolutely worth having watched 16 minutes of me blubber on about this. Because uh, it works. It's the swallow test. So right now you're sitting here, you're watching me just swallow. Okay. Well, however that felt. That's your baseline, right? Whatever. Maybe it's a little harder because you're you're thinking about psychic ability. So it might be a little harder than normal. If it was a little harder than normal to swallow just now, like you had to, you know, like that, then that means you're a little stressed out about this topic. That means you have a little bit of uh, anxiety or a little bit of, uh, you know, unsureness about this topic. But the swallow test is really super. So you can actually say, should I um, buy a new car right now? Again, very specific question with a very specific time not should i buy a car there's no time your guides are going to be like sure you can buy a car yeah they may be thinking two years from now you may be thinking this saturday that's not going to work should i buy a car this week right and then swallow a little bit hard not too hard but a little bit hard so but if it was really hard like you felt like you had a golf ball in your throat like that time that I ate that raw oyster I never will do again and shouldn't ever do. Um, that's the feeling of no. If it's really hard to swallow, that's a no. So these kinds of practices you can do to strengthen these abilities. There's lots of different practices. Driving in the car, which way is this car going to go? Driving in your car, you get to the stop sign and should I go left or right? If both ways get you to your destination, which is the best way for me to get there with the least amount of traffic the fastest and the safest. So again, I didn't just say, what's the fastest way to get there or what's the best way to get there? Best. Who's deciding what's best? Not you. Best for me is fastest, least amount of traffic and safest. You might add with no speed traps. <laughs> Whatever, right? No construction, right? Whatever it is that you want to add, be specific. Um, what are some other ways they can test their clairs? Um, feeling, I'm going to do a little bit with feeling really quickly. Clairsentient is feeling. And, and feeling is, in my opinion, the easiest clair, the easiest psychic clair to use. Um, because a lot of us are already empaths, which means that we feel everything anyway. If you're not an empath, it doesn't matter because feeling is the easiest thing to really use so you feel from here you feel from your, your your heart these chakras in the middle of your body you don't think so when you're trying to figure something out that's why the swallow test works so well the brain is not involved your body is your body knows so again we're going back to our body what is your feeling about work think about work and bring your 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 energy from your chest out towards work. Now, you may feel it in your body. You may feel it in your arms. You may feel it in your chest. You may feel it in your stomach. You may feel it in your bowel. You may feel it on your back, on, and it's like heaviness on your shoulders. Okay? 
Everybody feels things differently. So this is also an important exercise for you to know, oh, I feel it on my shoulders. Oh, I feel like I have a weight on my shoulders, right? Okay, well, what does that mean? You're carrying too much responsibility. Time to go talk to the boss or something, right? It's time to, for something to change. You're, you're over-responsible. You're overworked. You're feeling in your shoulders. What about if you feel it in your heart and you feel a heaviness or a tightness, you know, tightness on my heart? That's stress. That's stress. So if you're feeling a tightness on your heart, that is, you're feeling that, energetically because that's what we're using right now is energy but energy left unchecked will actually become physical in your body so if you're feeling a tightness in your chest when you feel into work you really need to take that seriously because that really could cause physical problems later on in your life or later down the line that's a that's a warning hey too much stress too much stress now you can't change work. A lot of us can't change work. We just can't quit, right? What do we do? Why are you telling me this? I can't do anything about work. Ha ha. Guess what? You can do a lot about every other part of your life that will release the work stress. So when we come home from work and we're stressed out, we literally do what we have to do, whether that's feed the kids, feed the dogs, uh, take care of people, whatever we have to do, we do. And you know what? Whatever we don't have to do, we don't do. And we crash. We sit on the couch and watch movies or Netflix or chill or we do something. But it's usually not relieving of stress to the degree that we need to, right? Watching a silly show definitely is an escape. And that's important. And it does relieve your stress a little bit. But really and truly, to get stress really off of your body, you need to active. You need to be active in, in the de-stressing part. Okay, so going home and crashing on the couch and watching a movie and eating comfort food, that's not going to help you. I hate to tell you. If your job is really stressful and you're feeling it, tighten your chest or even on your shoulders or wherever you're feeling it, that's going to be a problem for your health. So sitting home and eating comfort food is going to add more problems to your health, right? So what do you do if you can't do anything about work? Then you do something about you. Raise your vibration. Instead of going and sitting on the couch every single time you come home from work, intervene. Put a hobby in there. Start a hobby. Get out and walk. Walk your dog. Go outside and garden. Um, go out and even wash your car. Do something that's a little bit active, a little bit active because that action moving of your body releases the stress. It's like magic. Sitting on the couch, not so much. So get outside and do something. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't even have to be exercise. Exercise is great. It's super great for releasing stress. Super great. But if you can't exercise or don't want to exercise, start a hobby. Get up off of the couch, walk over to the kitchen, and make yourself a hot tea. Do something to, to get up and move around. Go to the table and get a puzzle and put a puzzle together. Start a hobby. Take classes. That's a great thing to do. You're like, I'm so tired. I just can't do a class. I just can't add anything to my schedule. I literally cannot do that. If your boss came to you and said, I need you to work an extra hour every day or you're going to get fired, you would do it. You'd find a way to do it. This is absolutely as important. You'd be surprised what you can find time for. So listen, a class, one class, maybe it's just one class. Maybe it's on Saturday or Sunday. You're going to go take a class in, fill in the blank, art, jewelry making, you know, um, anything guys any kind of class maybe it's online maybe you take a class online something to get your brain engaged raise your vibration up right um do um what else are they telling okay self-care they're talking about self-care go get a massage go get reiki go get uh reflexology go get a sound healing um go take a, a bath 
um, walk in nature, sit outside on your porch and do nothing but stare at the trees and listen to the birds sing. You know what that does? That, that soothes your energy. Okay? It soothes your energy, raises your vibration. Be grateful. A really good thing to do to raise your vibration is to do a gratitude list every day. Think of 50 things you're grateful for. That's five O things. By the time you get done with all the regular things, you're at like maybe 15, 20. And then you're like, I'm grateful for my fingernails. I'm grateful for uh, the color of the sky today. I'm grateful for the fact that my grass is finally growing. <laughs> you really have to dig. By the time you're at 45, you're like, I'm grateful that, um, you know, that I like purple. <laughs> I mean, you really have to dig. When you dig for things that you're grateful for, you realize how much you have to be grateful for. And that's a great mood enhancer. That's a great mood lifter. And listen, when you start doing these things, you're going to be better at work. You're, you're going to go to work and be a hap happier person. You're going to be a happier person around your family. You're going to be healthier. Your blood pressure is going to drop. And when you think of work, if you do this stuff for, say, uh, they're saying 30 days, but they're kind of hard graders, I'm going to say, do it for two weeks. And in two weeks, go back and have that same exercise and feel work. It's going to feel a little better. Surprisingly, right? Even though nothing's changed, your attitude, your refilling, your cup, your energetic cup is getting filled back up. Work is taking it out. You're filling it up off of work. Okay? So that's how you can, um, that's how you can really help yourself so if you get bad news about something let's say work or something instead of spiraling down into oh my god why does bad things always happen to me i know that sally's quitting and now i'm gonna have to do her job okay stop that's when we're forewarned it's forearmed we now have knowledge that nobody else has we're gonna go to our boss we're gonna come up with a plan and then we're going to know that we need to do a lot of self-care because you know you're going to be working more. This is what I do when I know that I'm going to be working more or I'm going to be going through a, a kind of a rocky time. Man, I, I have a standing massage appointment for every three weeks. And if I know that I'm going through a stressful time, I'll add another one in there. I'll add a Reiki session in there. I'll add something. I'll make sure that I... Go to the pool and swim. That's something I really enjoy doing. It makes me feel better. We have a community pool here. I can just go and jump in the water and float. Or I can swim laps. It makes me feel better to be in water. I can join the water aerobics, right? That's something I know about myself. You know what makes you feel better, right? Those are the things you use, right? Those are the things you use. What did they want to talk about? Um, I don't know. They're like, you're so off the path now. We can't even help you. <laughs> <laughs> that's my spirit guides if you're new here I talk to my spirit guides pretty much on the daily and when I do these videos they come in to help me um, with uh, with what I'm telling you um, what do you do I, I'm hearing them say what do you do if if you uh, have something like this and it kind of freaks you out right and, and specifically, they keep, so, so your guides can give you messages in all kinds of ways. Um, one of the ways that they give me messages is I stare at things. So I have a list of things written down here. And they make me stare at the words, Claire audience. So this is a really good tip. If I'm getting ready to go somewhere and I keep staring at something, like I'll give you an example. I have this wonderful uh, piece of black tourmaline that uh, Jen's World Tarot gave me. And it was way over here. And when I started this video, I stared at it. There's a lot of stuff to stare at, I'm telling you. It's kind of like disheveled over here right now. Uh, but I stared at that piece. So you know what I did? I picked it up and I moved it over here by me. Right? Because they want me to have this nearby. Uh, black tourmaline. It's grounding and it... Um, it's protection, grounding. Um, it's an amazing piece. Thank you, Jen. Um, but they wanted me, they kept having me stare at Claire audience. 
Um, so that's how I know they want me to talk about Claire Audience. Because sometimes when I'm talking to you, it's hard for them to get their message in. Claire Audience. What do you do if that freaks you out? Like, what do you do if you hear your name uh, and it freaks you out? Um, I also want to talk about clairvoyance. I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about clairvoyance. Um, what do you do if something like this happens? Okay, so that, apparently this is the energy that I'm getting from you guys watching this video. Um, because, look, look, let's be honest, right? Let's be honest. I lost my mom when, when I was seven. She died of cancer. And, um, you can imagine my life kind of went a little upside down for a while. And as a child, I could see ghosts and I could see um, everything, entities, ghosts, you name it, whatever it was, I could see it. And, and I didn't like going to bed at night. I mean, my mom had died. I was seeing these things. I didn't see my mom. I, I wish I had seen something that would make me feel better. But instead, I saw people I didn't recognize. I mean, I'm seven, right? I'm eight. I'm nine. I didn't recognize all these people. I mean, now I figure out that they're great aunts and uncles and everybody else over there trying to come to me and help me feel better. But at the time, I'm like, I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. I'm like this, you know. And and it was it was scary to me, right? It was scary. So I blocked it. And that and the fact that even though my family talked about ghosts all the time, we weren't supposed to really believe in it. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. But... Um, so I didn't get any, any, there was no support, right? Um, and so when you go into school, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, you know, you don't want to stand out uh, at all. You know, your goal is to blend in, is to be normal, is to fit in. You want to fit into the crowd. So um, I blocked it. I blocked all of this. And I blocked it really well until I got to my and until I actually, I, at one point, I moved to Galveston Island in Texas, which is very, very, very haunted. It's very much full of energies and vortexes. It's a very interesting place. Uh, when I moved to Galveston Island, man, I started having all kinds of experiences. All kinds. I was hearing things, seeing things, knowing things. And, um, and I was... Um, working at a university as a photographer and I, I would tell my friends because you know heck you're in your 20s and 30s I mean you know you just say yeah and, and the island was haunted we all knew that I mean really and truly there was pretty much obvious things happening that you didn't have to be a medium to see um, so for so much anyway um, and you know it was just a thing we kind of laughed about it right and I, and I had plenty of experiences that my friends um, knew about and experienced with me right um, but I, I still didn't accept it. I just kind of kept putting it off, right? So I understand being scared of this. I understand not wanting to accept it. I understand that. I understand that it makes you the weird person. I understand that um, your family, your friends may not accept this. You, you know, I understand you may be of a religion that doesn't accept this, right? I get it. I I'm totally have experienced many parts of that. Um, but I'm just here to tell you that if it's happening to you, if you've watched this video for 33 minutes, it's happening to you. You know it's happening to you. And and I just, I want to tell you to not be afraid of it. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of seeing ghosts. There's nothing to be afraid of knowing that um, that your boss, the, the Sally's going to quit. There's nothing to be afraid of that. Let's be proactive. Let's use it for our own, you know, good. It's a gift we have. Why not use it to help us and help others potentially, right? Now, um, ghosts are not, I, I just need to, t I don't know why I'm having to tell you this, but ghosts are not anything to be afraid of. Ghosts are uh, spirits that did not cross over in my experience. Uh, here's the reasons why. Sometimes they don't know that they're dead. Swear to God. I met a woman in my house. God bless her. She had had stab wounds all over her. She, her clothes were kind of tattered. Um, I will never forget her. Her name was Shelly. I will never forget her. Um, she was wearing jeans and she was thin and she had blonde hair and um, anyway, and she had these stab, bloody stab wounds anywhere. Anyway, um, you know what she wanted? She wanted me to help her. All ghosts that come into contact with you, 
99% of ghosts that come into contact with you want, want you to help them. In, in Shelly's case, she didn't know she was dead. She told me, I just need a ride to the hospital. I just need a ride. This was in Galveston, of course. I just need a ride to the Galve to, to the hospital. And, and you know, and I was leaving. <laughs> I was leaving the house. I wasn't going to the hospital, but I was going kind of within, say, almost less than a mile of the hospital. So I, and I had to go, I had an appointment and I said, look, I am leaving. I, I tried to tell her you were dead. I, I tried to say, honey, you're dead. I, I can help you cross over. No, I'm not dead. You don't understand. Don't tell me I'm dead. Are you crazy? I just need help. I need to get clearly, I need to go to the doctor. I need to go to the hospital. I'm like, no problem. She literally got in my truck. Now ghosts travel with you. They do not apparate the way your loved ones that have crossed over the veil can come in, can come out, can go to Switzerland, can go to Bali, can go to Mexico. They can have a good time. Ghosts cannot. They are earthbound. They must travel with you or walk. And it's not so good for them to walk. So she got in the car with me, got my truck. I drove as far as I, as, I, as I could to where I knew she would have to go left and I was going straight. And she got out of the car. She got out of my truck and started walking towards the hospital. So, um... <laughs> They don't know they're dead. Okay, some other reasons that they didn't cross over. They're afraid of who's on the other side. I have experienced this too many times to count. Um, they are kids that were abused and they don't want to cross over because hmm, they don't want to meet their dad or their mom or their abuser and they feel like that's who they're going to meet. Or their adult that's that was abused by their husband and they don't want to, or their wife or their father, whoever. They don't want to go over there and meet that person. They, they're, I'm going to stay right where I'm at. I know this place. I know I'm safe. I know this person isn't here anymore. So I'm safe. Now, you can cross these people over. It's not, not particularly hard for me to do. Um, I simply find somebody that they love, that they feel safe with, to come get them. Okay? I've done videos on that. You can check out. I have a playlist on Ghost. Watch it. Go to the main channel, go to playlist, and you can see all my playlists, okay? Um, another reason that they don't cross over is they're waiting for somebody. I had a guy, um, I had a guy that um, freaked me out for a while. See, again, this made me scared, right? Um, when I was in my 30s, uh, this guy that I used to call Abraham Lincoln because he was really tall, really thin, and sometimes he wore a black tux. And he, and he had a beard like Abraham Lincoln. He had dark beard. I mean, it, you know, um, and I would see him on occasion when I was in Galveston. I owned an old, an old Victorian that was built in 19, I mean, 1896, I think, 1896. Um, anyway, he would appear sometimes in that house. And uh, one night in particular, I woke up and I had, uh, at the time, my, my dog was this big lab pit mix and she was growling at the door and the bedroom door was ajar, you know maybe this much she was growling at the door this low growl and i thought great somebody's broken in right then i hear clear audience i hear come to me it's okay come to me come here i'm like oh hell no somebody's trying to call my dog you know you mess with my animals you got problems right so I jump up out of bed. I walk toward her. She's not even paying any attention to me. She's looking out the door. And her hair is on her back. It's all raised. I open the door. No one is there. So when I look with my other senses. This is before I accepted I had these abilities. Right? This is before I was practicing. Before anything. Way before. I knew it was the Abraham Lincoln guy. Which made me think. That he was up to no good. I, I mean, he was talking kind of quietly and softly to my dog. But why are you calling my dog? I don't, that's not, you know, why do that? So I assumed this dude was bad. He was not a good energy. He wasn't good for me. And I pushed him out of the house with my own thoughts and energy. We are very strong as humans. Push energies and entities out of the way. Banish them. Okay. Fast forward at least 15 years. I tell you, I'm stubborn, didn't I? Um, and I'm in my first class for learning how to be a psychic. <laughs> and uh, one of the classes in the series was on mediumship. And 
the guy, and this was also in Galveston, and the guy was standing there in front of us, and he says, oh, I've got an energy here tonight, and he's wearing a dark suit, and he has a beard, and bingo, bingo, you guys, in my mind's eye, clairvoyance, in my mind's eye, just to his, it would be to this way, to his right, there's the dude, Abraham Lincoln, and I'm like, golly, I hadn't seen him in so long, what is he doing here, you know, and he starts describing this guy, and I'm like, he's with me, because <laughs> I was like, man, you know, oh man, like, why me, of all people, right, so, between me and my teacher, we were able to talk to this guy. We found out that this guy, who, who was a ghost, this guy and I had a previous life together around the Civil War, and we were in war together. And, and in war, you know, you are highly emotional. You feel like you're going to die. You make these packs you know, with a with a fellow soldier, I'm not going to leave you behind. I'm not going to leave you behind. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to protect you. Um, if we get separated, we're going to find each other, right? You make these packs, uh, like brotherhood packs. Of course, I was a male in that lifetime. Well, I had made this pact with him that should we get separated, we'd find each other and that we would take, you know, take care of each other, drag each other off the battlefield, whatever, right? Well, obviously... I didn't, <laughs> I didn't follow that pact with him because when I crossed over, I jumped out and went to the other side and I've been reincarnating since. This poor guy has been stuck here on earth looking for me. And how interesting that I end up in Galveston. I'm not from Texas. I'm not from Texas. How interesting that I end up in Galveston where this guy is looking for me. We talked to him and we ended up crossing him over. So another reason a ghost will stick around is to actually look for somebody, to, to look for them. Like I just did a video recently on a ship's captain um, that went through the 1900 storm in Galveston, which was the biggest hurricane. It caused the most number of deaths ever, still ever in the United States, 6,000 deaths um, and um, of a natural disaster. And um, this ship's captain came to me because he knew I was a medium. He knew I could hear him and see him. And he pleaded with me, please, I need to find my daughters. They're lost in the storm. I need to find my daughters. Well, his daughters had crossed over. They did perish. They, they were crossed over. But he didn't cross over because he was looking for them. So I reunited them. I brought his daughters and his wife down and he went to them and they left. So ghosts are not so scary, you guys. Um, why they scared me in the beginning was I, I met a ghost who needed, who was so sad. She, her, again, on Galveston, her husband had been lost at sea or, or he never came back. Maybe he ran away. I don't know. He never came back. And these old um, houses in coastal towns, and I don't know if this is throughout the country, but for sure here, or, or here on in Texas on the coast, in Galveston on the coast, we have these things called widow walks. Okay, so you go into the attic of the old house, and there's a trap door to go onto the roof where there's a little, and I mean little, it might be five foot long by three foot wide. It, or it may even be just big enough for you to stand and it's a place where you stand and you can see the water and you can see when the ship comes back so she had a widow walk on this house and she would walk the widow walk every day every night looking for her husband and so she her energy came down and because I didn't have any boundaries because I because to be honest with you, had I done this work, <laughs> had I actually done the work to accept my abilities and to understand them, this wouldn't have happened. But because I was not aware that I needed to have boundaries, I was not aware that I was a medium. I was not aware that I was a psychic. But I had these abilities. This woman literally came down, boom, right into my body, inside of me. And I felt this anguish and sadness, despair, 
instantly. It was like, it was like she jumped inside my body. She probably did. And that was a violation. It was like, I felt like somebody did this and had me right to me. That's a violation. I'm a very private person. Number one. And number two, I'm not even a huggy person and you done jumped in my body. Oh, and this ain't going to fly. This is not going to fly. I threw her out of my body, God bless her, and I told the people that I was with, two of whom owned the house, that this woman jumped out of that window where there was a sewing machine and she had been sewing and she jumped down into my body and they said, oh yeah, we know her. She messes with that room and we can't even use it because she does things. She, she takes people's clothes. If I have a friend visiting, she takes their clothes and throws them out of the closet on the floor. The hangers, the whole thing, throws them out onto the floor. Okay, so so she obviously had an attitude. So some ghost can implore you to help them, right? To be, they're just so emotional. And you can feel it if you're an empath. You can feel it if you're a medium. You can feel it if you're psychic. You can feel that emotion, right? So so that's that's the thing. You don't need to be afraid of ghosts. They're not trying to hurt you. They can, if they're living in your house, they can make you feel uneasy. You could feel tired. You could feel more emotional, sad. Because if they're living in, the, in your house, they're using your energy. They're using your energy. They don't have energy. They need your energy. So this is where it could be a problem. I always say, don't, don't ask, don't tell in my house, right? If you're a ghost and you're staying in the closet all the time, except for at night, and you're not causing, you're not taking too much of my energy, and you're not making me feel sad or angry or weird, or you're not making my family or my friends or my dog feel weird, okay, it's all good. You cross that line and you make my dog upset, which they can, or you make friends feel weird, family feel weird. I don't like going into that room. Something's wrong with that room. That's a ghost. They're not scary. They're not trying to hurt you. It's just you're able to feel their energy. First thing you need to realize is that person that recognized that is clairsentient, psychic, an empath. First thing to know, you've got abilities. So, right? Second thing to know, maybe you need to get rid of that, that, uh, trespasser, right? How do you get rid of them? Well, you tell them to get out. There's lots of things. People think sage works. Sage is wonderful for a lot of things. It's actually antimicrobial. It's actually really good for a lot of things, it, but it, it really doesn't, in my opinion, affect energy. That's just my opinion. Ghosts are energy. I need energy to affect energy. So how can you do that? You can bang on a pot and say, get out of my house. You can bang on a pot and say, only those that have my highest good can stay in my house. You can just say that without banging on a pot. You can scream it. You can say it in a nice way. But the more emotion, the more energy, the more effective. You can get a drum and bang on the drum. Again, emotion, energy, vibration. Sound is vibration. Sound disrupts vibration. Um, I had a client that couldn't, he, um, he's been a client of mine many times regarding these things because he has abilities. He gets a ghost headache. <laughs> when he has a ghost, he has a specific headache. He's like, I've got a ghost headache. <laughs> That's what he calls me. And I don't do this work guys. I don't, I don't do ghost busting. I just do it for friends. Um, but uh, I knew when I went in there that my spirit guides told me that he that water would be a really good way to clear this energy out of his house. So you can see this um, you can see this thing right there. That's actually a water fountain, and um, and it is the water fountain that they bought and they ran in their apartment to clear the ghost out. It makes a gurgling noise. His wife hated it so bad, she gave it to me and said, don't ever let this come back. But I keep it because it really is 
a good device. If I ever have a problem, I can plug it in, put some water in it, and run the water. Water disturbs that kind of vibration, and water also raises the vibration. She didn't like it because it made her pee all the time, which I understand. So there's so many ways to get rid of ghosts, right? You can you can tell them to go. You can call in Archangel Michael. And, and listen, there's no set number of times that you can call your angels or your guides. They're ready for you. They're infinitesimal. They're, they're, they're infinite. They're in, they, can, they can break themselves into a gazillion pieces and still help everybody. So feel free to call Archangel Michael. You don't have to be Catholic. You don't have to be religious. I'm not. He works for me all the time. Um, call in your guardian angels. You know, call in whatever you need to raise the vibration. Another couple of things you can do to um, make, make, it an un, make it an unattractive place for them to stay. Um, play happy music. Do things that, that are laughter and laughing, right? Be, raise the vibration. They won't want to be there. If the vibration is constantly happy and, and people are fun and laughing and playing games, they're not going to want to stay there. That drives them crazy. They're going to move out of your house, okay? Now, I want to say this because this is important. I also saw recently... Um, through my same friend, um, a friend of his who um, didn't deal with, she also has abilities, okay, but she's not using them again. So she had a pretty yucky entity. It's not really a ghost, but it's an entity move into her house and um, she didn't get rid of it because um, she was already kind of down. She was already kind of depressed. So that when you're depressed, or sick, or you're just battling something, battling an illness, or recovering from an illness, your vibration is lower. This is a perfect opportunity for them to come in, okay? So they came in, or it came in, and over the course of five, count them, five years, this thing basically I wanna, I wanna, I don't wanna scare you guys, but this thing made her vibration go lower and 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 lower until she was just beat down. Until she was just beat down. And it really wasn't her. It was it. So if you have an opportunity, if you have a situation where you're feeling depressed and you have no reason, I talk about this all the time with empaths. E-M-P-A-T-H-S. Empaths. Y'all, happens to me. If you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh my God, I'm so, something bad is going to happen. I just feel terrible and something bad. I have this impending sense of doom. I don't know what's going to happen. Something bad's going to happen. You need to stop and you need to say, am I good? Yep, I'm good. Family? Yep. Work? Same. House? Same. Pets? Same. Community? Same. That's not yours. That energy is not yours. You're picking up energy from who knows where. Maybe a different state. Maybe a different country. You're picking up your, your radio dial. Your frequency just got this other frequency came in on your channel. It's not yours. You know how when you listen to the radio and it skips when you're traveling cross country. It skips and you're all of a sudden listening to a weird station you never heard of before. That's that. So when you have a ghost and you start feeling negative, depressed, angry, sad, for no reason, you check in, you're like, there is no reason for me to feel like this. There really isn't. It's not you. You need to check your, you need to check your surroundings, check your house. And if you don't see or see, sense or feel anything here, go ahead anyway and throw them out. Call in Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael, come down, please, into my house. Come down into my space. Come down into my body and protect me. Come down and clear this house of anything that is not of my highest good. Please check the walls, the attic, the basement, the closets. Please check every square inch of this house, Archangel Michael. Please remove anything that is not of my highest good so it is. Thank you. First step. You did it. First step. Now, in, in a day, if it doesn't feel better, 
then you might need to go to step two, which is literally having emotion. Anything that's not of my highest good, get out of this house right now. I'm demanding you, right? You may have to do that a couple of times because sometimes they go out and come back in. <laughs> but you know, if you do that enough, it's gonna happen. And if you do that in concert with running water or playing happy music, laughing, singing, dancing, they're not gonna wanna be there. So there's really nothing to be afraid of, you guys. But what it does require is for you to be involved. And that's the whole purpose of this video. You have abilities. You're just going to have to own up to them, people. You don't have to become a professional psychic or medium if you don't want to. You don't have to. But you are going to have to deal with it because as the veil thins, this stuff is going to happen more often. And it's going to require you to get involved, to deal with it, to do something. I promise you, at some point, you're going to have to do something. Maybe it's that, and this is something they frequently say. They say this all the time. You and me, we are, um, you know, we, we apparently signed a contract before we got down here to do this. <laughs> um, and, and now is the time. It's like the date on the contract is now. And they're saying, okay, you guys agreed to do this. We're counting on you. Now come forth and do it. Now what is it you agreed to do? You agreed to incarnate at this time which is something that should just blow your mind in general when you think about what we've been through. But anyway, you have abilities, whether they're nascent, whether they're new, whether they're experienced, whether you've experienced all this stuff, whether it doesn't matter. If you've experienced it a tiny, tiny bit, you have abilities. Here's something else that you're going to be asked to do. And what they talk about all the time is you, you, you don't have to be a professional, but you will be needed. Okay, so here's what they're showing me. Uh, your brother Bubba calls you and says, Sis, the craziest thing just happened. I just saw a mama who done passed away 10 years ago in the kitchen. I swear to God I saw her. I saw her with my own eyes, and I think I'm going crazy, and I don't know what's happening, and I don't know who else to tell but you, but I don't know why I'm telling you, but I'm telling you, and I swear I saw her. Okay, that's going to happen. Bubba is going to see mama. And you're going to be the one that he's going to call. Why you? Why you? Maybe there's six kids. Why is he calling you? Because everybody knows, because it wasn't spoken, but everybody knows you were the one that saw this stuff. So he's calling you. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to be the one that says, Bubba, it's okay. I know you saw Mama. I believe you. I believe you saw Mama. And you know what? She was just coming to say hi. She was just coming to say hi. She was just coming to say that she loved you. She was checking on you. I think it's wonderful that you saw Mama. That's beautiful. I can't wait till I see Mama. So you're going to be supportive. You're going to help them understand what they saw. That's our role. If we do nothing else for the next 10 years, however long you're on this planet, your role is to be calm. Your role is to help people. When people come to you and say, craziest thing happened to me remember these are the things the craziest thing happened to me you know immediately it was somebody's spirit guides or something metaphysical craziest thing happened to me i saw an orb i saw it i saw it can you believe that yeah that's really cool you know i saw an orb once too and i think they're just energies that are here you don't have to have the answer you don't have to have the answer just listen just listen and, and be there for them, right? Excuse me. I'm talking too much. That's what's happening. So that's another role that we're playing, people, is we are here for other people. That's, that's our role here as, as, a, as a person that has abilities. So I hope this has helped you. I hope you found it helpful entertaining um <coughs> excuse me um you know it's okay my, my my message to you is everything is okay you're okay there's nothing to be afraid of everything is divinely guided everything is in divine timing when you are ready the teacher will appear right hopefully this video has has helped you with that um 
as I mentioned, Medium Kim and I are doing classes. A lot of people do classes. A lot of people on YouTube that you watch do classes. If you're interested and you feel compelled to learn more, take a class, right? Learn about some of your abilities. Um, do, do those practices I mentioned earlier. Don't be afraid of them. Instead, open up a little bit to them and know that it's okay. Everything is okay. And um, if you like this video, I hope you'll hit the like button. If you like this video, please subscribe. As I mentioned, when you go to my main channel and you can do that by clicking under the video, you'll see my name and you can click to my main channel. You'll see an actual playlist and you'll see playlists on all kinds of interesting things. Maybe you don't like politics, then just click over to the playlist that's all all kinds of videos on ghosts, crossing people over, on mediumship, on spirit guides, lots and lots of videos for you there to experience and to learn about the spirituality side of things. Like I said before, I know that this channel is a little bit Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We have politics, I have spirituality. Some people like both, some people like one or the other. Going to the playlist can help you find more videos that you like, that are best for you. So thank you so much. I will leave the information for Kim and I's class about mediumship in the description. It's coming up on July 14th. Um, we will have another class on Claire's. We are going to continue having classes, to be honest with you. This is something that my spirit guides really want me to do. They've been talking about me having classes for over a year. Um, so I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing, helping you guys um, in any way that I can. Thanks again for joining me. Blessings to all of you and take care and we'll see you guys soon.